Hi there, I'm Deneen, and this is the Truth in Business Show. Join us today, and I'm going to be talking to Stephanie Shar, Mary Kay representative. She has a unique perspective on helping women change their skin and change their life. Join us. How are you today? I'm fabulous. I'm so excited to be doing this. <laughs> I am excited to have you too. I know that we met a few years ago, and I was just overwhelmed with everything that you're responsible for. So I would love to know a little bit about you and how you got into this current position at Mary Kay. I actually started my entrepreneurial journey by being a fashion blogger in LA. I don't even know if you know that. But I started, yeah, I had a fashion blog when I was living in LA in my 20s. I'm, I'm from here, I'm from Michigan, but I moved to LA after college. And um, while I was in the blogging world, I actually ran into someone that um, worked for Mary Kay. Now, even though I was into clothes, I, I didn't really know much about makeup. I wasn't really into it, and so I started buying the products, but I didn't sign up for the for the um, for the network marketing, you know, company. Um, but a few years later, I actually lost contact with that representative, and I started buying from someone else. And when she invited me to a meeting. I decided to sign up because I just wanted the discount and one thing led to another and I started selling it because everybody has skin. It's the easiest thing to sell in the world is skincare and makeup because everyone at least has skin even if they don't wear makeup. Like, behind the scenes I had a lot of personal things going on. Um, during that time I got pregnant, got engaged, had a baby, um, became a single mom and um, so a lot has happened during that time and if it weren't for Mary Kay, I mean, I, I don't know what I would do because it really helped me with that transition mm -hmm. to becoming a single mom and having that flexibility. And so here I am now, but I really use Mary Kay as a vehicle to help women to become more confident in who they are, to love who they are, and um, to change their lives and the lives of others. So how long have you been doing Mary Kay then full time? I kind of accidentally have been doing Mary Kay full time since the beginning because when I first started, I had actually just left my corporate job because I was working 13 hour days on my feet and not taking any breaks and I couldn't handle that as a single mom. And so I actually was kind of looking for another job, um, you know, another real job and Mary Kay just came at the right time. I mean, it, it seems like a coincidence, but it wasn't, it was God, and, um, and that's, that's what happened. So I've been with Mary Kay for, it'll be four years in April, um, and yeah, it, it was totally not um, what I planned to do as my career, but, but it happened, and I'm so happy it did. <laughs> and the opportunity for women in this kind of company is tremendous, it's huge. So how do you feel like your personality, because I know lots of Mary Kay representatives, I'm sure many of us do, some of us who are listening might even be, but how do you feel like your personality blends into what some people might say, well everybody does that, I have, or I have to be a certain person to be a Mary Kay rep, you know? What about those kind of things? How do you feel like you bring you to Mary Kay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, I and I mean, I want to touch on that. So, and I think that's a total lie. Like, if we believe that we have to be a certain type of personality or a certain look or, or have it all together to be a certain position, I mean, that's, that's just a lie from Satan. Because when I first started with the company, I didn't have it all together. Like I said, I was a single mom. I was on food stamps. I was struggling. Um, and I didn't look like how I thought a Mary Kay person should look. And um, I... I didn't know anything about makeup, like I said. I didn't have a lot of people in my network to sell to. And so I just, I didn't have anything that I would think would make me a good Mary Kay consultant. And, um, but the thing is that whoever you are, your personality is going to connect with different people. Mm -hmm. And those are going to be your people. Right. And I, it took me a while to realize that. But, you know, just being more of who I am made me more successful, not less. Whereas I thought, you know, if I tell people, if I show them this aspect of my life that isn't all put together, they're not gonna like me as much, but they like you more because you're more relatable. Right, and I totally get that. I totally understand that and believe that when we show up authentically as our authentic selves, that's when we really attract who we're supposed to work with because you could have a bunch of clients that you're just like drain all of your energy and sap everything out of you because 
you're trying to be whatever it is they think you should be. But when you just do you, mm -hmm. and have you found this to be true, those people that are like you, or those people that you like, they start to kind of be attracted to you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that mm -hmm. true? So I wanted to go a little bit into what is it, or what inspired you to take this Mary Kay business, skin, makeup, and now say, I'm going to empower women. How did your journey go? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the empowering women thing came first. I think that was something I always wanted to do. I didn't know how, how I was going to do it. I mean, I was one of those people in college where I didn't know what I was going to be when I grew up. And, you know, so I'm talking to, if, if you're in college and you don't know what you want to be when you grow up, it's okay. I didn't figure it out until I was almost 30. There's people older than me that are still figuring it out, and that's fine. So, but I always knew that I wanted to empower women. I just didn't know how. And so Mary Kay became that vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, it, I thought that it was gonna be through blogging and that's why I love you know social media so much and you talk about my platform. So the name Own Your Bold was actually the name of my blog. And so I just kind of kept that theme even while doing Mary Kay because now I use Mary Kay to empower women to own who they are, to be bold enough to be who they are and to love themselves. And so, um, so that's kind of how that happened. You know, I love what you do on social media and you have that Instagram account, Own Your Bold, and it's part of what you do for Mary Kay. And I know what you mean when you're talking about being able to transition and keep the same name but still do basically the passion that you have. I love that because I know for me, I still have Grow From Your Overflow even though it doesn't mean just a personalized faith plan. Now it means filling up on good things, whether that's personal, professional, spiritual. So I think it's important, and I would say that to you too, it's important to go with your passions, but don't think that what's come before is something that you need to cut off all the time. It's just gonna transition into something different and new. How do you feel that your network has grown? Has it been through social media? Has it been locally? What, what kind of tips could you give, or what has been your experience, I guess? Well, um, yeah, I mean, everyone's experience is different. Mm -hmm. And I would say for me, I mean, personally, my biggest advice is to get off social media. I mean, I love social media, I do it, I, I like doing it, but you're going to make the best, most real, deepest connections in person. And so for me, most of my business comes from referrals. Mm -hmm. I get referrals at all of my parties, at all of my appointments. I, I There's a lot of word of mouth. I'm kind of known now as the Mary Kay lady in Romeo. Like I have people call me and they're like, oh, I heard that you live in Romeo and you saw Mary Kay. You're a person. <laughs> so it's, which has been amazing and a huge blessing. Um, and then of course, you know, being part of your group and attending different events and things like that has really helped. Um, but I always tell people do not just rely on social media because the problem is that social media has, and, and I was just actually talking about this on Instagram yesterday, social media, there's no in real life anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Social media has become our life. And the problem with that is that social media is so big, the internet is so huge and there's so much noise that you can get lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. And like you said, there's a lot of Mary Kay consultants, there's a lot of skincare and makeup consultants, there's a lot of direct sales in general, and so how are people supposed to find me and all that? And they can and they do, but it's, you know, you can walk into a room of 20 people and meet all 20 of those people, or you can walk into a room of a million people online mm -hmm. and are you really gonna meet 20 people in there? Probably, but it might be a little harder. You are so real on social media. And I was talking to someone the other day who just said, I could never do what she does and how she, how, how raw she gets on, online with people. You know, I don't know how far I can, um, want to do that to attract people. But I think because of that, I think your authenticity, you attracted a lot of people because of that. But then you have that second part where you that one-on-one -on -one connection. So do you, how do you use your social media to pull people into that personal relationship? Well, first of all, thank you for all that. Um, but I think, you know, part of it is just it's who I am. I've, I've, I've always been this, well, let's take it back a little further. When I was younger, I was really shy because I had such horrible depression and anxiety that I was terrified of what people would think of me. And so as I got older and got into theater and different types of art, I started coming out of my shell and, and, and then I just did like a 180 and I was like, never again am I going to go a day with feeling like I can't 
be myself mm -hmm. because you know our whole lives we're told that we're too of something we're too much we're too loud we're too messy we're too big we're too small we're too you know whatever it is mm -hmm. and what if we just decided one day you know what what if I'm just great the way I am like what if I'm not too much of anything you know what if I'm the perfect amount and so I started thinking that way. And so I think I attract people because they want to be that way. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's not even, I used to be so obsessed with like marketing strategies and how do I do this strategy and figure this out. And, and, and I realized the best strategy is just being who you are and loving who you are and not being afraid of what people are going to think. Because people tell me all the time that I need to not be so real. People tell me, <laughs> people tell me, they're like, I can't believe you share that you shouldn't be sharing that. Right. And, you know, and, and because it makes people uncomfortable when you're comfortable with yourself right. and they're not. And then they can either choose to be inspired by that or to not like that. Right. You know, you need to do whatever you feel God has called you to do. And if that's not to share something, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. I want people to know that. Right. Because as much as I share, there's certain things that I don't. And so if someone if, if someone has to decide, am I not sharing this because I'm scared? Or am I not sharing this because I need to protect myself and protect my calling? And so it's really just kind of figuring out what that reasoning is. You have to be who God calls you to be. And he's called you and he's created you and you are enough. I mean, yes. that, that is part of our acceptance of our gift from God that whatever we need, whatever as we've gone through, it's all for a reason and that we are enough. What does a typical day look like for you when you have all these demands of being a single parent and an entrepreneur and, you know, laundry? I don't know. What does a typical day <laughs> look like for you? Well, first of all, I don't sleep much and I drink a lot of coffee. I think that helps. Um, I don't recommend uh, that part, but... <laughs> you can sure tell you're in your 30s. You know, it's it's hard. It's it's. But the thing is, I don't think that life needs to be easy to be good and I think that a lot of times people especially especially in my generation want to avoid what's hard they want to avoid what's difficult what's gonna take time and what's gonna take the most effort they want microwaved everything microwave love microwave success microwaved everything and the thing is there are gonna be times in your life where you don't sleep a lot and you drink too much coffee but there's gonna be other times in your life where you don't do that and so for me it's really just um, when when those days get really busy and demanding, I just keep my why at the forefront of my mind, which is that I'm a single mom, and I don't want us, I don't want my son and I to stay in the same place that we're at now forever because I don't think that I'm called to stay in the same place. I think that I'm called to grow, and I think that he's called to have a, a better life than I can give him now. I do have a morning routine, and uh, what I typically do is I wake up and I have at least an hour of just time for myself. Drinking my coffee, reading, reading my Bible, praying, meditation, working out, gotta get back into that. <laughs> so my son goes to school in the mornings and so I, that's when I do my phone time. So I'll do some phone calls, I'll book some appointments, um, and then he gets home from school, we have lunch, I give him a bath, we play a little bit, and then um, my parents do help out sometimes, so if it's a day that my mom is watching him and she takes over and I see clients from about 1 to 9 p.m., and then if it's a day that she doesn't help me out, then it's just me and Trey. And sometimes I bring him to see clients with me, usually I don't, usually we go have fun, um, but I do see clients about three days a week. And, um, and I do my phone stuff every morning. So yeah, so it works I, out. I think it's really important that you've found that having that morning routine is so important. There are studies about that. There are books written about it. It is so important to do something for yourself. Now for me, I don't work out in the morning. I have it to other times of the day, I, but I do have that quiet time in the morning. And I am so proud of you for having that even with a young child because I don't know, I used to like have to lock myself in the bathroom and stuff because I just didn't have any time to myself or I'd have to wait till somebody took a nap or somebody went to bed. So for me, it was looked a lot different and I really, really enjoyed the morning time because I'm a morning person and so I would say that to anyone, find your way to do your morning routine, whether that is, you know, 
doing your devotionals in the morning and reading your Bible or it's getting a good workout in or if it's everything if you have that time but really it is important to read to grow and have that personal time for yourself even in the middle of chaos so you talked a little bit about your why knowing your why so why is knowing our why important well, it, it keeps you going. I've had people tell me, you know, I'm kind of jealous because you, because of the fact that you are a single mom, like you don't have a choice but to make this work. I mean, you got to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. You have someone to take care of besides you. And so I think for me, it's, you know, I, I do have almost an advantage there where it's, it's not hard for me to figure out my why. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if you're having a hard time figuring that out, I think it's really um, it's something that does take time and, and you mentioned something earlier about, you know, it's okay if you don't know everything tomorrow, it's okay if you're not successful overnight. It's something that, that takes time and, and it might change, mm -hmm. you know, and my why even before I had a kid was empowering women mm -hmm. and the vehicle for that, you know, might change. But um, it's really important because it keeps you going on those days when you just want to sit around and eat Christmas cookies. And, and you know, because we all have them. As, as much as I love what I do, there's some days when I would rather not do it. And, and, I, and I love what I do and I don't want to do anything else. It's, it's, it's really just a motivator. Yeah. And I think it's really important to let people know that even if you, on the outside, are successful or you feel successful, you are successful, doesn't mean that every day you get up going, woo, I'm going. How do you feel like you're connecting your faith to your business? How does that work for you, putting those two together? Yeah, well, going back to, you know, my, uh, I always call myself the, this is the, the prodigal son. Yeah, I really, I really was. And, um, you know, I went through probably a, a solid eight years where I didn't really believe in God. I knew he was there, but I didn't have a relationship with him. I didn't go to church. And, you know, now it's just crazy because I can't go like a second without praying. I mean, it's it's like a loop in my head of, of prayer. And I just, it's amazing what that does for your life and for your business and for your mental health. And I mean, it's, for me, it's like a no brainer connecting the two. It's just, they're both, they're just, it's just who I am now. I mean, it's, it's so, my faith is so interwoven in my business that it's, it's my ministry. It really is. Right. So. And that's the way God wants it. God wants us to have a seamless life. You know, that piece of fabric, that silky fabric that can just ripples and it's just so nice. And that's really what he wants for our life. He doesn't want us to compartmentalize. So here I am acting like the mom and here I am acting like the Mary K rep and here I am acting like the daughter and here I am acting like whatever I act like a PTA or the church. He wants you to, like you said, be authentic and show up as you no matter what. There's been specific times where it was like, I didn't know how I was going to, I mean, especially at the beginning when I was on food stamps and and I always tell people I was literally sleeping on a floor. I couldn't afford a bed. I was sleeping on a floor. I literally would steal toilet paper. Don't do this. <laughs> this was before I really knew Jesus. I would literally steal toilet paper from public bathrooms because I couldn't even afford toilet paper. Okay, that was where I was at at that point in my life. It was the lowest point of my life. And so I think um, the, really the turning point was honestly when my mentor and Mary Kay sat me down and she was like, you need to figure out your life, girlfriend. She was like, you need to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And the only way is through Jesus. And so you need to go home and get on your face and talk to Jesus about this and figure it out. And I think, and she, I just needed someone to give me that tough love of like, look, sister, like I love you, but you need to get your act together. And cause she just saw me in this whirlwind of chaos right. that I had created. And so, um, and so that was really the turning point for me. And so, I don't know, find someone who will talk some sense into you. I mean, and listen to those people because, I mean, they're, they're the best people. You know, yeah. don't listen to the people that are going to tell you to give up. Don't listen to the people that are going to tell you, oh, it's okay to stay in that, that place that you're at. Because it's, you know, if, if God has called you to something more, that's, those are the people that you should be listening to, is the people that are affirming what God has already told you because you know, you already know. Right. I will be putting Stephanie's information down in the show notes so that you'll be able to contact her whether you live in Michigan or not. But I would also say 
Follow her on Instagram at Own Your Bold. That's right. <laughs> Follow her, follow her on Instagram at Own Your Bold. You'll really learn a lot about her story and how she does empower women. If you need that encouragement, I would say go over there right away. Again, I'll put everything down in the show notes so you can connect with her. And of course, if you are interested in a Mary Kay business or just in learning more about entrepreneurship, I'm sure she would have a great conversation with you about that as well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us on the Truth and Business Show. And as always, be filled to overflowing.